Okay, now we're going to start getting into the nitty gritty of it for the endocrine system. We are going to venture into the anterior lobe of the of the um, pituitary gland known as the adeno hypothesis. So anterior with an A, adeno with an A. And so in the adeno hypothesis, we actually have cells that will secrete hormones. They will make them and secrete them. So, however, the directions, whether or not they need to make them or secrete them are coming from elsewhere. They're coming from the hypothalamus up above which sends down releasing hormones if they want it to make it and sends down inhibiting hormones if it doesn't want it to make the hormone. So the endocrine control lap is in the hypothalamus, okay? So if I ask you hormones made by the hypothalamus that it secretes, it's going to be blank releasing hormone if it's stimulating the adenohypophysis or it's gonna be blank inhibiting hormone if it's inhibiting the hypothalamus. And by now, you're kind of going, I don't know, this just seems super complicated. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to go, all right, think about the job you have. All right. Do you work for somebody else or your own boss? Well, most of you work for somebody else. Or if you're your own boss, think about if you're working at McDonald's. Okay. So whatever corporation you're working for, there's a president. Okay, and usually what happens is the boss, the president, the owner, whoever it is, tells the managers what to do. This is what we are doing. And then the manager tells you, the worker, yes, work. Okay. Well, that's the same thing as the endocrine system where the hypothalamus is the big boss. And the manager then is going to be the adenohypothesis. And so then the adenohypothesis will secrete hormones and those hormones will go to distant tissues and or organs and those tissues or the organs are going to be the workers. Some of them are going to work and some of them are going to like give off the work to unpaid interns. Okay, there could be a fourth player going on down there. So if you can understand how business works then you can understand the endocrine system. So let's get back to the endohypothesis and let's talk about some really cool, unique things that are going on there. This is one of the two places in your body that has a portal system when it comes to blood. So when you were learning about circulation and lecture, we talked about the portal system and at that time we were talking the hepatic portal system. So this is the other one, it's called the hypotheseal portal system. Why? Because it involves the anterior lobe of the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And what happens normally, if you stop to think about it, when something would be secreted from the hypothalamus, it would be secreted into blood vessels, veins that would carry it away. And those veins would normally drain all the way from the hypothalamus, go down to the heart, and then it would leave the heart, you know, go from the heart to the lungs, back to the left side heart, and come back out the aorta. And if it needed to get to the adenohypothesis, you would have to take one of your carotid arteries to the internal carotid arteries and eventually make it going back to the adenohypothesis, which means it has wasted a bunch of times plus traveled a bunch of feet that it didn't need to do. So we have this portal system where hormones that are made in the hypothalamus can travel in venous blood from the hypothalamus directly to the adenohypothesis. Notice they are not going to the neurohypothesis. They're only going to the adenohypothesis where they are sending that blood to where all the endocrine cells are. So the adenohypothesis makes and secretes its own hormones, yes but it only does it if from the hypothalamus through the portal system, we have a releasing hormone. And if we have an inhibiting hormone coming from up above, then those endocrine cells in the adenohypothesis will stop releasing their hormones. So what hormones does the adenohypothesis release? Well, there's a great mnemonic known as flat pig, and I put a picture of this mush pig here to try to get a little visual. Let's get your limbic system going here. And so flat pig, that means there's seven hormones we're going to talk about. So these are not coming from the hypothalamus. These are coming from the adenohypothesis. And so 
They are, the first part is the abbreviation and then in black afterwards, the name of the hormone. So the hormones are follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, adrenal corticotropic hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone for flat. And for pig, we have prolactin, interstitial cell stimulating hormone and growth hormone. So you do need to know for this section, you need to know the names of these seven hormones and their abbreviations. But if you notice three are in blue and four are in red, and that's because the details of the four that are in red, we're not gonna learn about them. Well, we will, but not in this section. We will learn about them when we get to the male and female reproductive systems, because that's where they are important and they will have action. So it's too much for now, but we will be covering them later. But you do need to know their names now for the flat pig part. When you look at some of these, what you will notice, for instance, TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And so if I would ask you, what do you think this does? You would be very astute and you go, oh, I think it stimulates the thyroid. And you would be correct. And this is an example of what we call a tropic hormone. Most of these seven hormones are going to be hormones that regulate production of hormones by other endocrine glands. In thyroid stimulating hormones, the thyroid is an endocrine gland that secretes its own hormones. So this is going to tell the thyroid gland whether or not to secrete its hormones. And so anything that has stimulating, you can tell that already. And then this one that even has the word tropic in it, well, there you have it, you know it's a tropic hormone. So to review what we've gotten so far, we learned that in the hypothalamus, we have neurons that make antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, but they travel down in the axons to the neural hypothesis from which they are released. So technically, they're not coming from the hypothalamus, they're coming from the neurohypothesis. And the oxytocin has two big effects, one on the mammary gland and one on the uterus, whereas antidiuretic hormone had its effect on the kidney. So we're completely done with neurohypothesis. Where we're going now in this section, okay, are these other hormones, except we're gonna get rid of this blue one, prolactin, because this is also related to reproductive system and we're getting rid of this light blue over here because as you can see these are related to the gonads but up here in the hypothalamus you see the rh at the end of each of these lines that is blank releasing hormone so if we are talking a hormone coming from the hypothalamus it has to end with the two words releasing hormone if it's stimulating the adrenal hypothesis or inhibiting hormone if it's blocking now, we are not going to be talking about blockers. It's way too much, but later on, if you take an endocrinology class, then you can learn a lot more about it. I will mention one, one later on, just so you have an example, you understand how it works. But otherwise, we're only going to be talking about releasing hormones. So in this case, this is showing you that thyrotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, and that's what causes production of thyroid stimulating hormone, which in the thyroid is going to cause production of a couple of other hormones. And so we're gonna have this same president manager worker thing happen for all of our adeno hypothesis um, hormones. And with that, we are done with the adeno hypothesis and we will start talking about each of these hormones individually for the rest of the lectures we have on the endocrine system. So make sure you understand this and I will see you shortly as we start our exploration of hormones from the adeno hypothesis. Thank you for all your hard work.